Hello everyone, this is Japan Sci-Fi. So we've got a new Gundam Seed Freedom trailer for. Let's get right into the explanation. In this video, we'll break down the trailer frame by frame and also analyze the recently released plot and power dynamics to understand why the compass was created and the relationship between the compass and the foundation. Well, there's more to it than meets the eye. Furthermore, we'll discuss why Kira has to betray Rakusu considering all these aspects. First, let's break down the power dynamics and plot of the Seed Freedom movie. The official revealed its storyline as follows. In CE-75, the battle was still ongoing. Independence movements, invasion by blue cosmos are happening. To pacify the situation, the World Peace Monitoring Organization, Compass, was established, Lakusu as its first president, and Kira and others intervened in battles around the world as its members. During such times, a joint operation to Blue Cosmos headquarters was proposed by the Emerging Nation Foundation. So these are the plots that are revealed by the official. And let's also break down the official power dynamics diagram. From this, we know the Compass Force is a peacekeeping organization created by three nations, Omni, Zaft, and Ob. When we look at the Foundation, which claims to be in an emerging nation, we know that Foundation comes from the Eurasian Federation and also it is able to give orders to Compass, the Lakusu force. Next, we'll explain why the Compass is created and what is the purpose of the Foundation, and also why the Foundation is able to give orders to Compass force. Before that, we'll get into the frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of the Trailer 4. Right from the beginning of the Trailer 4, we witness the Mobile Suits battles. This seems to be a joint operation targeting the Blue Cosmos headquarters as revealed in the plot. Let's look at it frame-by-frame. First, the headquarters raid, and from this we know that the battle scenes are intricately crafted. For mobile suits enter from the above, Geoguk Menace, Rising Freedom, Immortal Justice, and Gunstrom. The color of the opposing beam is green, and from other traders we can deduce that they are 105 daggers. The 105 daggers bear the mark of the Alliance on their shoulders and are operated alongside the Destroy Gundam, confirming they are at the Blue Cosmos headquarters. In this scene, if we look closely, all four suits are dispersing in the formation. And I think this is excellent, because these pilots are likely to be Kira, Shin, Luna Maria, and Agnes. All are exceptional pilots. They prefer individual combat over formation fighting, exhibiting their piloting prowess. Notably, none of these four are using thrusters even under anti-aircraft fire. Kira in particular is dodging using only aerodynamic control of his wings without firing his thrusters. It's great to see this character absent for 18 years making such a confident and super heroic entrance without even using thrusters. But it's not just for the show, it's a very practical depiction of the mobile suits, because all four mobile suits here are likely battery driven suits, conserving their thruster usage and relying on the distance judgment for evasion using free fall and aerodynamics. Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice appear not to use thrusters, indicating they're probably conventional power suits, not the nuclear powered suits. Now let's move on to the Freedom entering combat, instantly eliminating approaching missiles and wind them. But take a closer look, the shield is detached here. However, the shield is not used to destroy enemies, but instead flies off somewhere. In the next scene, we see Kira's high mat full burst mode. If you look closely, he fires the beam rifle and railgun twice each, and also fires the shoulder mounted agony cannon for two times, indicating a controlled use of firepower, unlike Freedom's usual barraging high mat full burst mode. The Wandering Shield also reappears in the foreground, indicating it's part of the full burst attack. To Kira, the shield is more likely a dragoon type of melee weapon. Well, it seems he could have a good conversation with Amor about this. Well, next, let's focus on Gelguk Manus landing. This impactful landing conveys a sense of weight, which reminds me of Flash of Hathaway. Here, the Gelguk Manus deploys a beam shield, and probably this is a first for Zaft standard production models. The Dome Trooper also had a beam shield, but this design was stolen, as we know. The Gelguk Manus shields can fold, indicating a battery efficient design that allows it to function as both a beam and a physical shield. Moving on to the Ganstrom scene, here on the left side of the scene, we see a dagger cut in half, implying this is right after the bisecting scene in Trailer 3. The background is the same for Agnes' scene, confirming she pilots the Gan. 
The Gyan Citron fires the Beam Balkans here, destroying the 105 dagger. The realistic portrayal of Ballet Impact is very notable. That means this movie is very carefully crafted. And from the lore, we know that the 105 dagger typically equipped with the laminate armor to deflect beams through heat dispersion. However, it seems that the 105 dagger got its cockpit penetrated here. This might suggest this 105 dagger is a cost-reduced version, the post-war version of the 105 dagger produced in large numbers, because it is supposed to have a laminated armor just like the Archangel to disperse the beam. Or this could just simply be that the Ganstrom beam Balkan output is too high for the dagger's heat dispersion capacity. Either way, I'm just content that I was able to see 105 dagger in action, you know? So next, let's examine this scene. Immortal Justice and Goguk Menace fighting side by side with a Jin in the background. This indicates that the Jin and Compass are allies, suggesting that Jin belongs to the Foundation Army. And please remember this scene for later analysis. It's very interesting that the Wild Compass deploys advanced suits like Rising Freedom or Immortal Justice, the Foundation only deploys Jin, the low-grade mobile suits. In another scene, the Black Knight squad Shiva is seen alongside Jin, confirming its affiliation with the Foundation. We also see Immortal Justice and Gelguk Menace cooperating, fighting alongside, and this also supports the speculation that Shin Asuka pilots the Immortal Justice, likely alongside Runa Maria's Gelguk Menace. If it were Athran, if Athran is piloting Immortal Justice, I believe Kagari will be very angry because Athran already unofficially dated Luna Maria's sister, marrying Hawk, and now if he is dating with Luna Maria and Kagari will be very angry because that's cheating, Athran. Well, set that aside, now let's also discuss Immortal Justice Boomerang. It's seen destroying the head of a 105 daggers, which feels inconsistent with Shin's character. Perhaps Shin has adopted a non-killing policy of Kira influenced by his respect for Kira, and it is hinted in post-Seed Destiny drama CD. In the drama CD, there's a scene that Shin really really respects Kira for his non-killing policy. So that we can conclude that Shin is respecting Kira and trying to create a peaceful world so that Shin is not aiming for the cockpit, but instead he uses a boomerang to cut off the head to take off the combat ability. The next scene features Agnes and Shin's face expression suggests a conflict in values because Agnes seeming to enjoy in combat and she also bisects enemy and targets cockpit. While Shin, adhering to non-violence, appears to be questioning the need of such battles. This scene likely depicts their differing views on war. Agnes wants to kill, Shin doesn't want to kill. And also, please remember, Agnes' voice actor is the same as Stella Lucia. So that means whenever Shin talks to Agnes, he is reminded of Stella. Now on to Lakusu Klein. And, oh dear, well... In this scene, Lakus Klein looks very cute. I mean, hey, I, I grew up watching Seed and Seed Destiny, and now she's like, what, 19 and 20? My god, oh, Lakus Klein is very cute. Well, before we get into the second part of the video, let me introduce myself. I am Japan Sci Fi, a huge Gundam fan. I love analyzing Gundam frame by frame to give you some new findings. And also I will share all the latest Japanese information to global fans to help you catch up to the upcoming movie. Please don't forget to check out my trailer breakdowns, Dream 4 Freedom League analysis and possible movie sequels. Without further ado, let's get into the next part. Next, the scene with Ofe and Lakusu. What is Ofe planning with Lakusu? In trailer 1, Lakusu responds to someone's touch with Lakusu's seed ability is partly activated. Their relationship deserves attention. I speculate Ofe also has seed. The background of this scene, the Middle Eastern style architecture, aligned with the depiction of the Foundation as an emerging power in the Eurasian Federation. It looks like some sort of Middle Eastern nation. And also there's a Jin in the background, painted blue, might indicate a ceremonial color scheme specific to the Foundation. Finally, the scene showing Compass full force here. In the background is the Archangel, and in the foreground we have a modified Minerva 
which is not confirmed but it's very likely to be a Minerva Kai, the modified version. Minerva Kai bears the mark of SCC-102, while Archangel is marked SCC-101, indicating their Compass first and second ships. The Minerva Kai also appear briefly in Trailer 3, likely represent the repaired Minerva. As Arthur Trine, the sub-captain of the ship also mentioned in the post-sea drama CD, Minerva is not completely sunk and it's still repairable. So it is very possible that Minerva was modified and became Minerva Kai here. And also we can see there is a bow-mounted large turret, and this could suggest a new positron cannon like Lowen Green or the Tannhäuser. Also, we can speculate that this cannon is used for the atmospheric exit, and this is evident from the green particle in the flight scene of Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice. This green particle is called the Positronic Interference, which we can see a same scene Battle of Orb. Now let's delve into the big mystery revealed so far. The disclosed power dynamics seem straightforward, but there's more to it. The question is, what is the Foundation's goal? And why was Compass created? And why does the Foundation able to command Compass? What is Kira thinking? And why he has to betray Compass? Well, let's explore these. First, let's review the power dynamics. Compass is a world peace monitoring organization jointly established by three forces. But is this really the whole truth? In reality, we have armies formed through a cooperation of multiple nations, like the United Nations forces. So we can say Compass is somewhat akin to the UN forces in the real world. However, the UN forces aren't necessarily the champion of justice. The problem is, whose side are they on? They are on the side of their investors. The same applies to Compass. An ideal form of Compass Force would be a completely neutral arbiter of justice, but that's not the case. Who provided the weapons like Rising Freedom, Immortal Justice, and Archangel? Where did the money come from? When you think about it, the Omni Force and Orb and Plant are they are all in ruins in post-war. There is no way they had the financial power to jointly establish in such an army. Plants suffered a partial homeland destruction and a collapse of Messiah in the previous war. Orb's territory is tatters after being invaded by Zaft. The Omni, the Earth Alliance, is in shambles due to the Logos turmoil and has no money. Blue Cosmos is likely the only one with funds and money. So who paid the establishment of Compass? The only answer could be the Foundation. Their name says it all. Thus, the Compass Force is not a neutral peacekeeping organization, but rather one that must listen to its financial and investors, and which is foundations. The power dynamics in Japanese says requesting Compass deployment, and which implies a master-servant relationship of foundation and Compass. So Lakusu and Kira, they have to listen to the foundation's request because they give the money. That's why Lakusu bows her head to Aura, thanking her for the operational funds. So what is the Foundation's purpose? The answer to it could be the revival of the Destiny plan. Why can we say this? Because the Foundation is a very unusual military force. Remember, the Foundation was derived from the Eurasian Federation, suggesting that it is a natural-based nation. But these pilots look like a coordinators and they pilot the high-end machines known as Black Knights. This is certainly not typical for naturals. That means they both have naturals and coordinators. Additionally, Lakusu, who possesses the ability of Seed, resonates with Ofe, suggesting that the Foundation soldier are ace pilots with Seed ability. Therefore, the Foundation can be seen as a mixed military force with naturals, coordinators, and seed bearers. The trailer also mentions Chancellor Durandal and the Destiny Plant, implying that the Foundation aims to reboot Destiny Plant. Durandal's involvement is also referenced in Director Fukuda's X, the former Twitter, and it's post mentioning. Fukuda mentioned in the recording of the last scene of the movie, he mentions. Shar was there. By the way, Shar here indicates a Shar Aznavo, and whose voice actor is a Shuichi Ikeda, who also voiced Gilboy Durando, the Chancellor Durando in the Seed Destiny. This suggests in the last movie of the scene, it could include the flashback scene of the Gilboy Durando. So from this evidence, we can assume the Foundation is 
closely related to the Destiny plan and Durandal, and their aim is to revive the Destiny plan. Finally, what is the Foundation's real goal? It seems they aim to use Compass, the Lakusu force, to exhaust Lakusu and her allies. They use Compass as a watchdog to achieve their goal. When they want to destroy a blue cosmos, they send the Compass force to blue cosmos, and they will destroy each other and Lakusu will never gain the power she needs to maintain the world peace. And so that's why the Foundation is able to reboot the Destiny plan. And as it is very obvious in this scene, Compass and Jin forms a united front, but their forces are significantly conserved. Why don't they use Zaku or Guhu, the, the more sophisticated models? They only use Jin, while Compass is using their full force to combat the Blue Cosmos. Obviously, the Foundation is conserving their force. This leads to the understanding why Kira and Shin oppose the Foundation. For Lakusu, the Foundation is a provider of funds whose intention cannot be ignored. However, for Kira and Shin, they know that simply following orders from Foundation will not bring the world peace. And that's why Shin says, How long will this fight continue? Because Compass Force, Lakusu being bounded by money, inevitably means being manipulated by someone's intention. And as Lakusu says in the trailer, I too desire this, to fight alongside you. And she says that to Kira. And to realize this, Lakusu is paraded out as the representative of Compass. And obviously, this backfires to the relationship of Kira. And as the official interview revealed, the theme of this movie is love. Lakusu wants to love and support Kira, but her efforts are in vain. Because Kira wants to achieve the real peace, but there are no practical means to do so. Eliminating Blue Cosmos or the Foundation won't improve the world of Cosmic Era. But what Kira can always do is not resolve the world's real problem, but eliminate those who disturb the peace through firepower. As Kira says in the trailer, Which means, this battle is never ending. What I can do is... Thus, Kira sees that even Compass, established by Lakusu, cannot end the fight of the Cosmic Era. What Kira can always do is eliminate the disruptive force, for example, the Foundation. And that's why Compass is set to rebel against the Foundation. And also, Kira will be betraying the Foundation. And he might be betraying Lakusu in the middle of the movie, letting Lakusu know her way of thinking is not right. And also, this concept aligns with the theme of the movie, which is the freedom to resist. And that concludes the analysis of the fourth trailer. Please let me know your thoughts about what is the purpose of the Foundation, what are they trying to achieve, and why they are able to give orders to Compass Force. I would love to hear from you guys. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If this video gives you new findings, please like and subscribe to this channel. I really love analyzing Gundam series frame by frame and love to share the finding with you guys. It is a small channel, just started it, and I very much love your support. This was Japan Sci-Fi, signing off.